All right, folks, Vaidek here from Medalwani. And with us today, we have XTO and Cataclysm frontman, Maurizio. How are you doing, brother? Doing great. Doing great. So, you know, you've already released a single as well. How's the feedback been so far from the fans? Uh, incredible, actually. Um, you know, XDO has always been this like side project for me where, you know, I express my passion for the Roman history and history, in, you know, in general. And uh, it's just something that, you know, we never really did out of trying to build a huge band. It was always built around on passion and something cool and different than capitalism, you know. And uh, it's just, you know, it's been five years since the last album, Caligula, and the uh, reaction has been phenomenal for for single Rise of Hannibal and this new video. And we'll see it. Just I haven't seen the reactions yet. Um, I wasn't around until, um, like, now. I just got back and doing this interview. So I'm curious to see what people think of it. But so far, uh, I think it's going to be a great video. It's one of the best ones we've shot so far. And the idea was to bring you back to Rome. So I think we achieved that. Absolutely. You guys surely did. And, and the model was just a couple of weeks away. Uh, this album has been ha like on roll since the Cataclysm uh, record ended. I was completely aware of the updates. You know, the, the drummer Gene was sharing, you were sharing. So it took a lot of time for you guys to write. Was it something mm -hmm. that uh, kind of came after Cataclysm, new latest record was released or it was happening in the background from last couple of years? I think that, you know, Cataclysm uh, is, has been a band that's been very consistent over the years and also, you know, in certain areas has grown very big and, and I think that's taken a lot of our time. At the same time, our families have grown, all of us, and, uh, you know, we're, we're four brothers in, in Cataclysm and, you know, we kind of uh, always look for each other's, uh, you know, um, things that we need, you know, so that we are all happy and doing our things. And ex Deos, like I said, it's a project band. It's not something that we've, you know, put full effort, not because we don't love it the same way as Cataclysm. It's just that we don't have the time. So it's it's more of a time uh, consuming thing. So for us, in the, in the end, we're just trying to, to make way for it when we do have the time to do it. And we kind of always work like a year ahead. So when Cataclysm was about to finish the uh, Ghosts and Gods campaign, where we were in the middle of it, we decided, okay, we know by, by this time it'll be over. And, you know, why don't we do a you know, an ex Dale record and, and, you know, just take it from there and see what happens. You know, we'll have the time to take a break between both bands. So, uh, yeah, so the, the, here we are with that, you know. So we look forward to, uh, you know, promoting this record. Absolutely, man. Now, with Immortal Wars, I mean, having listened to the previous two records many times, and obviously Immortal Wars from last one month, mm -hmm. uh, I got to ask you, have you, do you feel that you've reached the pinnacle of creativity with XTO's this album in general? Uh, you know, it's 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 hard to say because with with uh, a band like XDO is is uh, different than other bands because it has a thousand years of history to talk about. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of potential to do a lot of different things. There's so many different characters from Caligula to Nero to all these you know crazy uh, emperors that existed and did crazy things that you could only imagine in a movie. Right. And uh, you know it, it, it happened. That's the thing with with Rome is that all of it happened. Uh, on top of that, it has a mythological edge as well. Like the Vikings, they have their own gods and stuff like that that they worshipped. Right. So you have a lot of potential to do a lot of different things. Now, musically, um, it, I also think that it has a wider range because it can do a lot more. You know, there's a lot of different things that we can do. It can make this more of a theatrical idea mm -hmm. in the end. So uh, I don't think we've reached the pinnacle of what Exdeo can be. But, you know, it's, it's a Roman thing and it's not something you can do every year. You have to kind of give it time to breathe between records and let people want it again because it's not, you know, so it's the same thing over and over. Like, you know, I don't know how many records, you know, I'm on a march going to do talking about the same thing. So it's so, you know, the let's say, you know, I guess I guess it becomes more of a music thing for I'm on a march. People love the music uh, because the theme itself, you know, it doesn't have as much of a rich history, let's say, as Rome. Rome, there's a lot of more to talk about. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just a different type of, of uh, angle to it, you know? Absolutely. Now, it kind of reminds me how important these subjects are uh, in a band. Let's say a band like Septic Flesh, who write about Greek uh, stuff. And you mentioned Amun Amart and XTO as well. You know, the ancient history and metal has always gelled together really well. And, and with you guys, you know, putting out this, this historical mm -hmm. slab of death metal, a story is very important, which actually, I know, as a, as a person who listens who reads lyrics and tries to figure out what's happening in the background, it says a lot. 
So when you talk about the Roman, you know, the, the inspiration that comes to write this, what was the source of inspiration for this record in general that it's the right time for me to release this for fans? Well, I mean, it's it's obvious if you look at the title of the record, The Immortal Wars, you know, it's something that, you know, I think we're still dealing in today's world. It's not changed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's, uh, there's a difference that, you know, back then it was uh, based upon conquering land, uh, conquering, you know, uh, people and dom for domination purposes. And mostly it was always about uh, economics, you know, it was always about getting richer and, and, and getting the same... Uh, you know, as much as you can from a different land, because as soon as you conquer, you get the spoils of war, and then you know you bring that back when the land is yours. So it's it was always about land back then. Now it's more of about ide ideology that that's masked by religion and for the same purposes, which is always monetary. Right. You know, it's either you know you're there for the oil or they're or they're there because of other reasons, and so they want to control populations over there, and then over here we're doing different uh, reasons to this for to achieve the same thing. Sure. So. The Immortal Wars, in a way, um, I was been fan fascinated about uh, the, the Punic Wars because they changed the concept of warfare. You know, Hannibal was, uh, you know, one of the brightest and, you know, uh, craziest generals ever that ever walked the earth. You know, anybody that would defy, yeah, that would uh, defy the entire Roman Empire that would walk, you know, would think that, you know, I can cross those, you know, icy, cold, crazy Alps. And walk right into Rome, something that they never expected him to do. He did it. It's it's insane. It changed the game, you know, for for strategics. So, you know, then you have then he met his match, and uh, all the guy did is pretty much use also his own tactics against them. You know what I mean? So it was a very important time of history because had the Romans lost that war, uh, it would have been over. Like in the sense of everything would be different today. We'd be in a different world. So, so it's a it's, um, very important part of history, I thought, that reflects a lot of what's happening today in a different way, you know. So I thought it was a good timing for it. And, uh, it, you know, I didn't want to talk about, I didn't, want, I didn't want to talk about the same things as like always Julius Caesar and, and, you know, the things that everybody know, because I've done that in the two first records. It was easier. It was, it was easy to introduce people to the Roman Empire like that because people are familiar with it. This is more deep, you know. You know, we're talking about two of the world's greatest generals, you know, Hannibal and Scipio Afri Africanus. Now, if you keep these two in mind, and, and these battles have happened, you know, between uh, two, two, you know, 264 and 146 before Christ. Now, when we look at that, there's a lot of magnitude that, that you guys have to live up to when it comes to, like, the sort of uh, longevity of this, uh, this, this timeline. And, and the moment I started listening to the rise of Hannibal, it was pretty much clear to me that you guys are up to the task. And, you know, the, the moment it starts, there's, Thank there's you. a certain, uh, you know, a sort of a feeling inside that, that this is turning out to be a great, not just musically, but also, like you said, with respect to history. Now, for you guys to introduce orchestrations, riffs, vocals, all these, it requires a lot of thought process. You know, it, it doesn't have to be necessarily similar mm -hmm. as done in the past two albums. So for you on this record, what sort of planning you had made to introduce the sort of, you know, the orchestral part? Because music is the one that's carrying the story forward. Well, you know, it's it's the process of it was different, for especially for this one. Since it was a conceptual record, it was very important for us that when you start press play and you're listening to the album, that you're feeling the emotion of what's going on with the time frame of what it's portrayed to be, you know, because like Rise of Hannibal was all about the rise of him and, and you know, taking the, the spot of his father and then like there's this dramatic feel to it. And then, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, Hispania where, you know, he conquers Spain and then, you know, it's a more aggressive song. So everything that was built around this conceptual uh, album was musically written so that it fits the mood. You know, so everything is kind of like put together in a certain way where, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling the emotion as, as the time frame of what is happening, you know. So there was a lot of thought process in it. We didn't feel like we needed to do a two-hour record. Yeah. We could have easily done a triple record because there's so much time to, to it's detail about this specific wars, you know. But we did in a poetic version, a very, a very uh, abbreviated version because it's a record and we want to keep people interested as well. So sure. it's two trilogies with a... With a uh, with a middle uh, part, which is like um, 
uh, you know, just a, a break between like uh, the two the two trilogies of like, you know, the Hannibal part, then the Roman part response to it, and uh, and then the Roman, which is like the song that celebrates the uh, the Roman soldier, you know, awesome, and his virtues. Man. Definitely, and I know uh, from the technical point of view, obviously you guys don't want to go like you know you don't want to go ape shit writing technical stuff. You want to focus more on the the musical side of it, and that's where the importance of this album lies because you guys tastefully combine the grand brass, the lush orchestration, like I said, along with the riffs that have been written. I mean, I can give an example of Hispania or even the Spoils of War. Every song has a story to tell in terms of songwriting abilities as well. And what's even, you know, what makes me feel even more interesting was right. was the, the bellows that you unleash. It makes me kind of visualize that I'm in the middle of the field, armor, you know, in the sun, and Legion 13 banners held a flood. I gotta give it to you for 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 you know conceptualizing everything <laughs> from your mind into actually Thank the you. music. Well, so. you know. Yeah. It's it, thank you so much. For that. And, uh, you know, to me, it's you either do it right or you don't do it. And uh, that, you know, to there's two parts to this. And as for me, as far as, you know, uh, doing the narration, I think the narration is a huge part of Exdeo because it really brings you into the into the battlefield, of course, and or or on the Senate floor, you know, so it's like for me, it's important that um we feel like that it's almost like i want you to close your eyes and imagine where you are you know i always said that the best way to listen to an next day record is to dim the lights have a glass of red wine and just imagine you know so uh, i think that's the only way you're going to really get the full feel of what x is about you know but you know for, you know technical ability you know we could do uh crazy things you know we, you know we wrote a record uh, in 1996 called temple of knowledge which was like 45 riffs on a song you know like we were able to do the most crazy stuff out there the problem is you know you, you're going to take away from other things and i think that we're more of a song structured band now and what we write whether it's cataclysm or exdeo is hooks and we prefer to put melodic riffs instead of technical riffs and being too crazy. I mean, some bands do it absolutely amazing. Like Nile is one of the examples, I think, that are great with historical things and being able to mix the technical aspect of it and keep, yeah, and keeping it interesting enough so that you're not losing the audience. You know, that's one of the you know, great, great bands of, of the historic metal side you know, of it. But that's their thing you know for us to try and do the same and one work i think that's good to do what we do and let the keyboards in your orchestra side of it uh, take over you know in a way so that's what makes it different in cataclysm too you know you know I i'm sure fans when they listen to the cries like you know i'm the general you cannot kill from from the battle of zama i gotta say that it's gonna suppress the chills you know the ripple down the spine the moment i hear that <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal Awesome, and that's 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 the, what what we wanted to create. You know, it's just that moment where you you're there and you can feel it, and that if that's happening, then the mission accomplished. You know, definitely the orchestral parts of this record. I mean, I'm sure you must be pretty much involved into this because it's it's there in your mind, and you have a certain visual, you know, thinking that how it's going to sound. So when you had the plan of bringing in the orchestration, you know, the kind of uh, on on a grand level, to be precise, was that something you know you uh, had a clear idea at the beginning how it's going to be, or as you worked on it, it kind of gave you even deeper analysis of how it should sound. Well, I had the, I had the idea in my in my mind already coming in, you know, and uh, because I always visualize the the the, um, the concept before and the ideas of how to do it, and then but I need somebody to execute it, and I uh, know I work with a band, you know, I I manage a lot of bands as well as a, as a, as another thing that I do in the music business, and one of those bands is Carrick Angren, and uh, Clemens uh, is a good friend of mine, and he was the right guy for this project because he has that deep dramatic feel to how he the, the, how he, he, he writes music and uh i thought like the combination would be really good and uh you know he, he has that eerie side of him and i i you know we sat down and put ideas together and uh when he came up with his concept and mind combined they really had a great feeling you know it was not overbearing some keyboard uh you know uh, uh, not keyboard but like orchestral um bands i think sometimes overdo it and it's too much I think he has a really perfect balance of when it's time to have the riff there, the riff is there, and when it's time to take over, he's there. So I, I think that he's done a great job, especially going to get the Roman feel, which is the most important, obviously. 
Absolutely, man. It's good to hear. Now, have you guys planned anything touring wise for this? I, mean, I know you guys don't tour much. You tend to keep it only from an album perspective, but something in the works to kind of uh, give fans a touch of it live. You know, I'll tell you that I love the fact that we toured for the two first records and we decided to stop because now it's like all the people that saw us feel so special that they saw it, you know? <laughs> so it's like now it's like people that that that, that pushed it and they said, ah, I'll see them next time, never got to see it and now they're freaking out, you know? But the thing is, is, you know, again, it's a time thing. Um, we, we've we've toured heavily on, on uh, Ghosts and Gods for Cataclysm. Now we're getting ready to do, we, we, you know, which was a big record for Cataclysm. We were out for two years and uh, now we're going to start doing 25th anniversary gigs because uh, I think it's an important time for us to celebrate. And we're going to do uh, Shadows and Dust and Serenity and Fire, two big classic Cataclysm records back to back live. So it's a big task and we're, we're, we're concentrating on doing that. And to bring x Dale in the mix would be too much. And uh, I'm not sure uh, if we're going to do anything. We're not closing the door to it. And I would prefer to do some open airs or something like that i would be open for for you know an exclusive show or something that would be cool but i don't know about actually going out there and touring for it you know um you know with something that we're gonna have to consider we'll see how it goes with the record you know in the end it's like the roman uh people you know they, they decide and the people decide so <laughs> i i have i'm, I'm powerless with it <laughs> <laughs> right, man. You know, you said that you, you're, you're taking uh, the two important albums of Cataclysm, you know, uh, throughout Europe. Uh, I think it's sometime in the October, uh, as far as I remember. So, you know, there's a, there's a long gap, you know, in between that. Is there anything planned in terms of uh, Cataclysm mm -hmm. getting back on road or, you know, writing some songs for the next record, maybe? Well, we are going to be uh, finishing off Ghosts and Gods uh the touring part of it in April with South America. And uh, we're going to do, uh, you know, about 10 shows down there. And that's going to be the last, the closing part for the touring for that record. Mm -hmm. And we're doing only one open air uh, in Germany. We decided to take the summer off mm -hmm. and uh, just do like one big open air as an exclusive in Germany at Bang Your Head Festival. So that'll be it for Cataclysm. And then 14 shows in Europe. No record planning right now. We're in the middle of, of just promoting this x thing and seeing what happens. Uh, but I'm sure we'll start getting into ideas uh, early next year or something. You know, we'll see how, how it goes. Awesome, man. That's good to hear. I look forward to that. And, you know, the, you know, the two special albums, fans are going to have a good time. So if you had to sort of mm -hmm. uh, sum up the record, the Immortal Wars, in a sentence, what would you say? Dramatic and powerful. Dramatic and powerful. Pretty much, man. Look forward to that, and thank you so much for having a, you know, a chat. I thank you. You, you too, man. Take care, and uh, we'll talk soon. Soon, man. Bye-bye.